Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at some examples of telling the difference between when we are working with a permutation and when we are working with a combination. So here's our first one. From a group of seven men and six women, five persons are to be selected to form a committee so that three women are on the committee. In how many ways can this be done? So first of all, I want to point out that if three women are on the committee and five total people are on the committee, then we have two men on the committee. So how to determine if we're working with a permutation or a combination is to think about does the order of the people matter? So let's say we have Susan, Julie, and Mary as our three that are chosen. Does it matter here if it's Susan, then Julie, then Mary, or Julie, then Susan, then Mary, or Mary, then Susan, then Julie? In this case, no, it doesn't matter. If it is those three women that are chosen from the group of six women, that's all the same, no matter what order they're chosen. So when that is the case, we are working with a combination. So we will be here calculating a combination. Okay, so we need to do two different combinations. We're gonna be doing one for all the different ways we can choose the men, and then one for all the different ways we can choose the women. So for the men, there are seven men to choose from. We are doing a combination of those men, and we need two men from the group. For the women, there are six women to choose from. We are again doing a combination, and there are three women that need to be chosen. So doing our calculations, this would be seven factorial divided by seven minus two factorial times two factorial. That can be reduced and calculated to be 21. So there are 21 ways to choose groups of two men out of a group of seven men. For the women, that would be six factorial divided by six minus three factorial times three factorial. That can be reduced and calculated to be 20. Now, we would multiply the number of ways we can choose the men with the number of ways we can choose the women. So 21 times 20 gives us 420 ways to choose the members of this committee. All right, let's take a second example. So there are six periods in each working day of a school. In how many ways can you one organize five subjects such that each subject is allowed at least one period? So again, here we need to think about does order matter? Does order make for a different arrangement? So let's take just a couple of subjects. Let's say math, history, and English. Now I know that we're working with five subjects, but let's just work with three for a minute. So let's say this is our first, second, third period classes. Does a different arrangement make a difference? Let's say we reverse those. Let's say we have English, then history, then math. Is that a different arrangement? Well here, when we're talking about scheduling your classes, that does make a difference. Whether I have math first period or English first period is different. So that means we are working with a permutation. So if there are six periods to work with and I need to permute five different subjects, then that will be six factorial divided by six minus five factorial. So that would be six times five times four times three times two times one divided by six minus five is one factorial, which is just one. 
So my, my ones cancel out and I have six times five times four times three times two times one, which is 720 different possible schedules. All right, guys, that does it for this video on the difference between permutations and combinations. We'll catch you in the next one.